Hi, I'm Catherine Heal. Shading variations on a curved matte surface provide a monocular cue for shape perception. For the past 50 years, we have been attacking this so-called shape from shading task using constraints on the surface normal at each pixel. For example, under directional lighting, if I give you the intensity at a point on a diffused surface and I give you the distant light source direction, then by Lambert's law, the normal is constrained to a cone. We can interpret this as a point processor that measures intensity and outputs a set of consistent shapes in the form of a cone of surface normals. This approach requires knowing the light direction. It either needs to be given beforehand or somehow inferred along with the shape. This is in conflict with human perception, which seems to readily infer shape without precise estimates of lighting. Here's a simple demonstration. The 3D shapes are immediately perceptible. They're all cubes. But when I tell you that one of the objects is lit from a different direction, you might be surprised, and it probably takes some effort to figure out which one it is. The simple perceptual example highlights a fundamental shortcoming of the traditional point processor. It requires prior knowledge of lighting. Today, I'm presenting an alternative point processor for shading that may move us closer to human vision and towards monocular depth systems that are more robust and deployable. Instead of measuring just the intensity at a pixel, as in the traditional point processor, we could also measure the spatial derivatives of intensity at that pixel. As we'll see, this allows us to express the consistent local shapes without knowing the light source direction. To do this, we assume that the surface is locally of second order, and we take partial derivatives of Lambert's law. Then the most important step, we can rearrange these equations to eliminate the lighting and albedo entirely. This gives us image-induced polynomial constraints on shape that do not involve albedo or lighting. We can also see that there is a two-dimensional variety of local quadratic shapes that explain a given image vector. This set is embedded in the five-dimensional ambient space of second-order shapes. Here is an example for a particular image vector i. This is sort of like the cone I showed earlier, with the critical difference being that instead of the set of allowable local shape for one particular light direction, this new 2D variety explains the allowable shapes for any light direction. Each point in this continuous set represents a local second order shape that is consistent with the input image vector. Here's an example of how the shape sets evolve for vectors at different image points. Now that we understand this, we're faced with the following challenge. Given an image vector, we need to represent the shape set in a convenient, explicit way. This is hard because the shape set is defined implicitly by three messy polynomials. The first thing we can do is exploit two useful properties of the set. These hold for any image vector, but I'll illustrate them for a particular one. The next few slides will get a bit technical, but it won't be for long. The first property is that we can mod out by an automorphism group, which is specified here. This says that the shape set is completely described by just one of its sheets. The second property is that the sheet is a graph and can be represented by an explicit function from R2 to R3. This simplifies our problem. All our point processor needs to do now is to map the image vector to an appropriate function. We couple a pair of shallow neural networks for this regression. One network approximates the family of functions R2 to R3 and the other network outputs the weights and biases of the first one, thereby approximating the map from image vectors to functions. This gives us our local point processor, a differentiable, compact, and feedforward map from an image vector to its set of locally consistent shapes, all without any explicit notion of lighting. Whew, technical part over. <laughs> now that we have a new point processor, let's see how we can use it. First recall how we use the traditional point processor when the lighting is known. Given the intensity at a single pixel, there is a cone of consistent surface normals. There is no reason to prefer any normal over the others, which I represent here in this graphical notion of likelihood. If we take a second image of the same shape under a different known light, the ambiguity reduces to a two-way choice. We can do something similar with our new point processor, but now with the critical advantage of not having to know the lighting beforehand. Again, fix the surface. Given one image vector, all shapes in the shape set are equally viable. Now take a second image under a different unknown light. The second image vector at the same location gives a different shape set. The intersection of the two shape sets in R5 is a single point, and this determines the true shape up to a four-way choice, its orbit under the isomorphism group. We look forward to seeing the research that follows this work.